Okay. Um, while we're waiting for the light to come on, we are recording, so let's go over a few things. All right, we're in five point. I'm in six point three. Now, this is a reasonably, well, I guess about average length section. So we may or may not finish six point three today. I hope we can, but if we can't, if we can, I'd like to at least touch on six point four. Okay. Uh, but if we can't get there, we can't get there. All right. Um, because you will, I'm taking, I'm guessing some of you will go on to physics maybe in time. Yay or nay? No. Huh? Going what? Yeah, yeah, but at some point you're not going to take physics. Oh, okay, most engineering does require physics. Think you'll be taking this. You will need, you'll use vectors a lot, which is what we're going to talk about today, but you will be using uh, some of the dot products and stuff, but they're really easy. So hopefully, if we don't get to it today, it won't be a major distraction for you. Okay, before I get started there, let's, let me go over a little bit of housekeeping and stuff. Not really, but you know, scheduling. This week is still last week of class, and so I my office hours today are still good, 115 to 315, okay? Now, tomorrow I'll be on Birmingham campus as always, 745, or most time anyway, 745 to 1145. Now, a lot of times I'll say, oh, I'll be there sometime after 1145. Tomorrow I've got an appointment at 1 o'clock, so I'm going to have to leave the Birmingham campus very soon after 11.45. I won't go be able to stay there most of the afternoon or something because I've got to be somewhere before 1 o'clock. So I've got to get home and there before 1. Okay, so I won't be lingering around on Birmingham campus like I sometimes do. Alright, the next week is finals week, so don't go by my locator card because that's sort of out the window now. Here's what next week's schedule is going to look like. Monday morning, 8 to 9.50, 50, not 15, I'm going to be doing a review session for my Math 100 class. So uh, some of them may opt to take the final, which they can. I'll have someone else monitoring, uh, practicing that for them. The rest of them are going to be doing a review session with them. Okay. So that gets up to 10, 9.50. After that, I'm probably going to be at the office most of the day, with this exception. I'm letting those students in that Math 100 class, because they're taking up what it was their exam period with the problem, the review session, they can come in and take their exam any time they want to next week. So that means I can never tell you exactly when I'm going to be in my office, because I could have students coming in any time. They could say right at 10 o'clock, OK, I want to take it now because it's fresh on my mind. Well, then I'll give it to them then. Or they'll say, can I come in Wednesday? That will be fine. Can I come in Tuesday? Yeah. So anytime, Monday afternoon. I can't say when I'll be in the office. So after 10 o'clock on Monday, say, check my office first, and then start coming this way. Uh, when a student comes in to do a makeup exam, I usually go to the classroom closest to my office so I can go back and forth more easily and even maybe hear the phone ring if it's ringing while I'm you know, giving the test. So I will be either in my office or in some classroom in between my office and here. Uh, at least one of those will be open. Just about always. Okay, Terrell is here and Kadarius is here. All right. Now for those who came, oh, oh, and this is the question I try to ask at the beginning of every class at this time of term. Have you done your senior course evaluations? Not yet? Okay. Huh? You have done them. All right. You have everybody done them? Fantastic. Okay. At least you folks have. I'm saying this mostly for people who are not here. Oh, he hasn't. Okay. Please do them. Okay. Please do the senior course evaluations. Okay. Um, all right. So, that's Monday. Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock, I have a final exam in this room, okay? 
So, and by the way, let me also say this. If I happen not to be in the office and you can't find me or I'm in giving a test or something, and all you're wanting to do is turn something in, then just slide it under my door if you want to. Or you can bring it and give it to me wherever I am. But if I'm running a review session and stuff like that, yeah, it's probably better to slide it under my door. If I'm giving an exam, probably okay to bring it in. Okay. If I'm teaching a class, which I am going to be doing next week, because I have a mini-term class, I will be teaching on Tuesday. Don't, yeah, I mean, that's probably not the best time to do it. But I'll take it, you know, to, to slide it under my door. Okay. So, Tuesday morning, 8 to 9.50, I'll be giving an exam in this classroom. So you can come and bring stuff to me then if you want to. And by the way, those who came in just recently, uh, I returned all the papers that I had graded so far to everybody, so right before you leave today if you'll pick up any papers you missed. Okay? Now, I can't return your research papers because they periodically have to sample for student writing, but I can't, I will, I did return test one and two and just a couple people who I had graded test three. And I know I graded more than that, but I can't find it now. Oh, I bet you I know where it is. Okay. One, two, three. Nope, not where it is. Okay. I know I graded somebody else's one. Maybe that was test two. I guess it was. Okay. All right. Uh, that gives you Tuesday. So Tuesday from 10 o'clock until 3.15, I'll be in my office or some room in between, here and there. Okay, at 3.15, that's when I've got a class. Okay, my second meeting term physical science class, we meet for class at 3.15. Now, technically, that goes till eight, uh, 7.45 in the evening. I don't think it'll take that long, because all i got to do is finish the last chapter and do the last lap. Okay, however, I'm giving that class the option of taking their finals early if they want to. A bunch of those are automotive students, some of them from out of state, many of them from all over the state, travel a long distance. Uh, so I don't want them to have to sit around on campus until Thursday afternoon at three o'clock at three o'clock to take the final if they're through with everything else. So I'm going giving them the option of taking their final early. So there's another reason that I may be anywhere between my room and this room because that it, whenever they come by, I'll find the closest classroom, and that's where I'll give their exam. Okay? So, but from 3.15 until probably sometime around 5 or 6, I'll probably be in class with them. Okay? Could be later. Could be as late as 7.45. But I'll be on campus until 8 o'clock that night. And by the way, what is next Tuesday? Voting day. Okay? If you're registered to vote in the state of Alabama, Please plan to do so either before you go come to campus, and while you're hurt, I mean, run home and do it then, or before you get home, be sure you between seven and seven. That's when the polls are open. Please don't fail to vote if you're registered to vote in the state of Alabama. All right, important election. Okay, next Wednesday, nothing scheduled. So from seven forty-five in the morning until three fifteen in the I mean five fifteen in the afternoon. I should be in my office or some classroom in between there and here, okay? If someone comes by to do a makeup, okay? Thursday, okay? From 7.45 in the morning until 3.15, in my office or somewhere in between, okay? 3.15 is technically when that physical science class has their final exam. Some of the students may elect to wait and take it then. If they do, I'll be in here, actually at 3 o'clock, in here at 3 o'clock giving the exam. It's not going to take more than an hour, I don't think, for them to finish their exam. So by 4 o'clock, hopefully I'll be back in my office or somewhere in between. Okay, Friday, I'll be on Birmingham campus, 745 to 1145. Okay? And then next, the week after that, I think grades are due by noon on Monday. So occasionally they'll give us back today and make it noon on Tuesday or even possibly Wednesday. Now why am I telling you that? You don't have to be here, but here's why. Some of you are new at Lawson, others have been here a while, but if you're not familiar with how we do things at Lawson, 
you know, your student suite, our faculty suite, you know, that employee suite. That's an archaic system. And we only have, last time I checked, 16 portals to access that system. That means no more than 16 people can be on it at a time. They may have upped it to 32, I'd be surprised, but even then, it's very few. And what happened the first time we used this, during finals week, students were, all the students were trying to get on the portal, on the system to see what their scores were. And guess what? We, the instructors, could not get on because they were using all the portals. We couldn't get on the system to put the grades in, and the students were griping that the grades were in, you know? It was an unten untenable situation. So what they decided to do, and they've done it ever since, is shut down student suite during finals week. And the next week, too, until grades are in, until whatever that deadline is, Monday at noon, Tuesday at noon, or Wednesday at noon, student suite you will not be able to access. But guess what? If what you're looking for is your grade, I and most other instructors put the grades on Blackboard before we put them on Student Suite anyway. So, go to Blackboard. Blackboard is always open, except when it's down, okay, which happened either in the summer or last spring one. Uh, Whitney's here, and Chester's here. All right. Okay, for everybody who comes in, I ask the same question. Have you done student course evaluations? Have you done student course evaluations? Yes. Yes, good, good, excellent. So to Darius, it's just you now. Please get them done, okay. All right. Uh, also, I return at the beginning of class all the test ones and test twos and a few of test threes, uh, but I didn't quite finish grading all the test threes, so I'll get those done either today or tomorrow. So if you want to come see me 315 in my office I'll give you your test threes if you got if you turn them in before today okay or if you uh, if you're on Birmingham campus tomorrow you can pick them up then Justin's here okay and for everybody who comes in I ask the same question have you done the student course evaluation please do that please do that the Dean is really on our cases bad so please get those done something in. Now, if you're just turning something in, if this campus is more convenient to you, slide it under my door tomorrow. I'll pick it up Monday morning. Okay, but if you're trying to pick up something from me, get it. But if you are going to see me, okay, listen up everybody. If you need to interact with me and me give you something on tomorrow and you're coming to Birmingham campus, please let me know. Because if I've graded your test, okay, it may be here and I'm there. So if you come there, I won't have it on me. So if you are going to come tomorrow to pick up your test three or something like that, let me know and I'll take it with me so I'll be able to get it to you. Otherwise, it'll be here, I'll be there, and that won't be too good. What's that? Houston? Uh, the next week, okay? I have a final exam in this classroom. 8 o'clock in the morning until 9.50, okay? After that, I'm free until 3.15. At 3.15, I've got a class in here, my mini term class, and it goes, probably won't go to 7.45, but it could go that long, okay? 10 to 3, exactly. Okay. All right, so let me get the people who just came in. Goodness, why can't I find you? If you want, right? 
Okay. Let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, six, nine. Got it. All right. Second. Okay. All right. Listen up, folks. Okay. I ask this question everybody who comes in. I don't remember to ask it. Have you done the student course evaluations? Okay. Please get them done. Please, everybody, get those done. Number two. At the beginning of class, I returned the test that I had graded so far, okay? So if you weren't here to get it before you leave today, pick it up. Here's a problem that I had. Yesterday afternoon, I had two hours of grade papers, and I had at least three or more students coming in, needing tutoring help. I think I had one needing registration help. I just had students coming out of my ears and I could not get all the papers graded. So I don't have all of test three graded. I have some of them graded, but not all. And uh, so I'll have those. When I've got test one and two. I can give those to you. Pick them up before you leave today. If you want to come by this afternoon before 3.15, uh, hopefully it'll have some of the rest of those graded. I've got, I've got, let me show you this. Sad, sad song, okay? Basically, this many papers came in yesterday and today. It, then I cannot keep up. So I'll get it graded as fast as I can. Okay. So I was going through my schedule. I know I made it through Tuesday. Wednesday of next week, I have nothing scheduled. No scheduled final exams. So you can, I'll be either in my office or in any classroom in between my office and here. If people come in and do the makeup exams, I'll go to the nearest, closest empty classroom. So check all the classrooms. If you don't find me in my office, check all the classrooms between my office and here. If I'm not in any of those, I may be at registrar's office or at lunch or in the restroom or something like that. I'll be back really soon. Okay. So that's Wednesday. Thursday, from 7.45 in the morning until 3 o'clock, I should be in my office or in one of the classrooms in between. At 3 o'clock is when my mini-term class is scheduled to have their exam. Now, I'm giving them the option of taking it early if they want to, so I may or may not be up here at 3 o'clock. If any of them still haven't taken it, I'll be here at 3. If all of them are taking it by then, I'll be in my office or some room in between. Friday of next week, I'll be back on the Birmingham campus, 745 to 1145. Now, Monday at noon is usually when we have to have grades in. Okay? Did I go over this with y'all about shutting down? Okay. Okay. I've already explained that. Okay. They do shut down student suite during finals week until grades are due. Which will be either Monday noon, Tuesday noon, or Wednesday. So don't try to get on student suite then. You can get on Blackboard and see what your grades are there. Okay. Any questions on anything? Oh, and what's next Tuesday? Voting day. Please, if you're registered to vote in the state of Alabama, don't fail to vote. Polls are open 7 in the morning until 7 in the evening. I have to vote in the morning because I'm here till 8 o'clock next Tuesday evening. So I've got to vote in the morning on the way in. All right. Any questions or anything before we proceed? All right. We're in Chapter 6, Additional Topics in Trigonometry. We're now in 6.3, Vectors in the Plane. What in the world is a vector anyway? Anyone know? A vector. What? Okay. One definition is a directed line segment. Now, those two key words there. Directed means a vector has a direction. Okay, that's part of its vectorness is its direction. Okay? The second part of its vectorness is that it has a fixed length. So that's why we say a line segment. Okay, this is Misha, right? No, I'm sorry. Chelsea? Sorry about that. Okay. 
Have you done the Siddha Course Evaluation? The Siddha Course Evaluation. Please do that. Uh, there is a, well, I'm sure there's a deadline. Uh, the deadline technically is after finals week. I don't know how far after finals week, but when I was a student, when I finished that last final, the brain turned off and I didn't think about things again until I came back the next term. Don't let that happen. If you do want to wait and see what your score is first, you can do that. But if there's a chance you don't forget it, do it ahead of time. Okay? It's open now, anytime between now and the but they will shut it down sometime after grade school. I don't know when, but they will shut it down. So I can't tell you exactly when the deadline is. It's sooner rather than later. Put it that way. Okay. And number two, before at the beginning of class, I returned all the papers I had graded so far to everybody. Uh, so before you leave today, put those up on your way out. Now I didn't finish grading all test threes. I was working on those yesterday when I was barraged by students, needing tutoring, needing registration, needing all sorts of things, and I just ran out of time before I got all the papers graded. So, if you need those to study for your final, come before 3.15 today, and hopefully I'll have them graded by then, or come to the Birmingham campus tomorrow, but if you are going to come to Birmingham campus and pick them up tomorrow, let me know so I'll take them over there, otherwise they'll be here and I'll be there. Or you can come by Monday. Hopefully they'll all be graded by Monday. Uh, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Yeah. Whenever you come, turn in your task. If you want them before the test, come see me. If you want them when you turn in the test, come see me. I'll give them to you. All right. Let's go back to vectors. Yes. A vector is a directed line segment. Okay. What we're our objectives in this section are to represent vectors in as directed line segments. There's a word. Directed line segments. Two key parts here. Directed means they have a specific direction. Segment means they have a specific swing. Okay? Uh, we'll write the component form of vectors, which is the easiest, the best way to write a vector is in component form. There are other ways to do it, but that's the best way. We'll perform basic vector operations to represent them graphically. If you do it in vector in component form, it's much easier, much more precise. Graphically works okay too. So we'll write vectors as linear combinations of unit vectors, and we'll deal with that. We'll also find the direction angles of vectors. As I said, vectors have, by, by their nature, they have a fixed direction, and we'll use vectors to model and solve real life type problems, specifically physics type problems. So let's hit the introduction here. Quantities, let's start with this. Quantities such as time, mass, that kind of stuff, energy, those are what we call scalar quantities. They just have a number, okay? Really something like height usually is just a number. But there are other things such as forces. A force is a push or a pull. It has a direction associated. Velocities have directions. Accelerations have directions. Okay? Momentum has direction. Okay? So there are other things that actually have directions as well. So certain quantities such as forces, velocities, accelerations, momentum, they have both the magnitude, how big they are, and also the direction, which way are they headed. They cannot be completely characterized by a single real number. Your mass yet. Time, yes, you know, energy, yes, characterized by just a number with units, of course, but, but those quantities cannot. To represent such a quantity, we use a directed line segment such as this one. Now, here's a characteristic of a directed line segment. You have an initial point, and quite often that's called P, okay? There are other times that we give another designation, but that's going to be your initial point. Q is typically what we call the terminal point, okay? And it's important to distinguish those. Why? Because you're going from P to Q, okay? You're not going from Q to P. The direction matters, okay? So it's going from P to Q. That's a fixed length. That's your segment, and it's a fixed direction. 
from the institute, from initial to terminal. Now, some vectors later on, we will put them in what we call standard position, then P will always be the origin. So then we could just refer to this as vector Q or V or something else like that and not F. So when you see the vector designation PQ, that means P's the initial, Q's the final. If that was RS, R would be initial, S would be final. Whatever is listed first is the initial point and listed second is the terminal point. Even if it's going in the opposite direction, when we list them, that's what it means. Okay, Doc is here. And for everybody who comes in, I ask the same question. Have you done the course evaluations? No. Please get those done. Huh? Uh, okay, that question was that. I don't know when they're going to shut it down. I know it will still be open through finals. Okay? But you see, I'm not going to see you after finals. And I won't be able to ask you after finals. So please get it done. Um, I don't know how long after finals will leave it open. But they will shut it down next week sometime. So I suggest it sooner rather than later. Okay? Please. The dean is all over our cases to get the numbers up. So please do this as soon as possible. Okay, number two. At the beginning of class, I returned all the test ones and test twos. And a few of the test three. Okay, I know I've got yours graded, so I can return yours. But I, I was just barraged with students yesterday afternoon needing tutoring, needing registration, trying to make up work, and that kind of stuff. And more than half of the office hours I had were spent helping students. So I didn't get a chance to finish doing all the grades. Sorry about that. Okay, I'll be giving it out at the end of class today. Actually, it'll be in two parts. Let me go on and talk about that then. The first part will be what we covered in Chapter 6. We covered Section 1, Section 2. We're in Section 3 right now. Don't, I won't ask you any questions on Section 4, even if we get to cover some. I've already got it made out, so I just get stopped at it at section three. Okay, uh, that would be the first part of your test. That should be test four. Okay, and then the comprehensive part will be very short. Both of these much shorter than your other tests have been. Uh, basically, ten questions or fewer each, and they'll be pretty short, pretty sweet. Uh, I think I can't remember how I wrote them. Maybe five questions on chapter one on chapter. Four, four on chapter five and one or two on chapter six. I can't remember how it broke down, but it, it's split up that way. Most of the questions are on chapter five, and four to five, and just a few questions on chapter six. Because the chapter six test will be ten questions there. Okay. And and before you leave today, pick up the test that I have graded and pick up your. Uh, last test in the final exam. There are 10 questions. Good question, by the way. All right. So, any questions about what a vector is? Okay. The directed line segment PQ, as I said, has the initial point P, terminal point Q. That's what this designation means. The initial point, the final point, and the vector symbol over that means it's a vector. Its magnitude or length is designated this way. It's kind of like a double absolute value, okay? And in fact, that's not a wet, bad way to think about it because just like an absolute value is always positive, the magnitude of a vector or its length can never, ever be negative. It could be zero. That's a pretty uninteresting vector, but it can never be ever a magnitude or length of zero. It can be found using the distance formula. It's the distance from point P to point Q, whatever that is. Now, another definition is two directed line segments that have the same magnitude and the same direction are called equivalent. Sometimes we'll call them equal vectors. Right? Every one of these vectors has exactly the same length, though so they're in different places in space but they're going in exactly the same direction. So all those are what we call equivalent vectors. Other circumstances will say those vectors are equal. Now, 
Okay. One of those are pointing this way. It has the same magnitude, but it has the opposite direction or a different direction, not equivalent. Okay. Uh, same direction, different magnitude, not not equivalent, and certainly anything less than that. Equivalent. So all five of those are equivalent factors. Same magnitude, same direction. Okay. The set of all line segments that are equivalent uh, to a directed line segment PQ is called the vector V in the space. So any vector V that has the same magnitude and the same direction as PQ uh, can be called vector V. Now, notice something here. When you use the two-letter designation, initial point, final point, you always put an arrow over it. Okay? And you have the arrow point on it. When the book represents it by a single letter, like V, they put it in bold type. Guess what? I can't write bold. So if I'm writing the vector V, I will also put the arrow over it. The book is writing it, they will put it in bold. So vectors are denoted by lowercase, bold face letters like U, V, W. Could be any letter, but if you see a bold face in the text on the slide, that means it's a vector. If I'm writing that, I put an arrow over it. Now, there's one slight exception to that, and we're going to get these later today, hopefully. These are what we call unit vectors. What do you reckon I mean by a unit vector? The what? Magnitude of one. If the vector has a magnitude of one, it's called a unit vector. A vector can have any magnitude, right? It can be very short, very long, whatever. If it has exactly a magnitude of one, it's called a unit vector. So if this W was a unit vector, I'm usually going to write that with a caris, a hat, a house top over it to indicate it's a unit vector. But otherwise, I'll put an arrow over it, meaning it's a the book doesn't make this designation. I too, I try to do that. Okay? So here's example one. It says show that U and V are equivalent vectors. What are the two requirements to be an equivalent vector? Same magnitude and same direction. Okay? Now how will we determine magnitude? The distance formula, okay? And anyone remember how that goes? Can't get my pen to activate. Oh, there it comes. Okay. Well, I can't get it to activate. There it goes. Okay, the distance formula is this. The square root, and this is the magnitude, let's say, of vector V, would be the square root of all right, don't know if you remember this, hopefully you do. The difference of the x's, that would be 4 minus 1 squared plus the distance of the y's, 4 minus 2 squared, okay? So that would be, oh, the magnitude of v is written with double bars, okay? Now, the magnitude of a vector is a scalar. Because you're only talking about the magnitude. You're not talking about its direction. So that's the scalar quantity. So even though the vector V is a vector, its magnitude is a scalar. Okay? That's what it means. So what would this be? The square root of? What's 4 minus 1? 3 squared plus 2 squared. That would be the square root of? 9 plus 4 is the square root of 13. A scalar number. So there is the magnitude of u. I mean, oh, yuck. V, v, okay? Let's do the magnitude of u. What would that be? This is pq now. 
It's the magnitude of you. Help me, help me. Magnitude of you. It was a long time since we did V. Like three minutes. What's the magnitude of you? Here is you. What's this magnitude? I already put square root down for you. Square root of what? Say again? That's the square root of 13 as well. So we're halfway there, folks. They have the same magnitude. But we don't know if they have the same direction. Now, they kind of look like it, but how do we tell about direction? What are we studying now? Trigonometry. What in trigonometry might give you a direction? Slope. Okay, slope would. You're absolutely right. And that doesn't have to be with trigonometry. Because so we could talk about the slope, and that would be okay kind of thing. Let's talk let's compare the slopes. What's the slope of U? What is slope? Rise over run. What's the rise of u? Two, two over three. three. So its slope of u was two thirds. What is the rise of the slope of v? Two over three. You're absolutely right. Okay. Now I ask a trick question. What else is two over three? What is rise over run in terms of trig? Y over X. And what is that? Y over, over run. Got it. In terms of trig functions, Y over X is? Oh, uh, oh, uh, tangent function. So that's, yeah, your slope equation that we did back in algebra is the same as the tangent function in trig. So, yeah, these are same slopes. Same tangents, same magnitude, those are equivalent things. Very good. Does everybody see that? Okay. If one of these had been tilted safely, but tilted just a little bit off, not. Or same direction, but not quite as long, or just a tad longer, not. Okay? They have to be same magnitude and same direction. All right, let's see how they did it, okay? First, they did PQ, which was from the origin, 3 minus 2 squared plus the square root of 3 minus 2, 3 minus 0 squared plus 2 minus 0 squared. And yes? Oh, they don't put you there? Um, no, the difference is that it proves on the one. Is that what? For Q, for Q, it proves on the one. So. Oh, really? Yeah. So they were not equivalent. Mm -hmm. Or the other one was a 4 3. The other one was 5 3. 5 3 coming from two, two. 2 2. Okay. So they just had different points there. Okay, sorry about that. Oh yeah, yeah. That you would do it the same way. Was your were your twos equivalent or not? Well, if you changed all the numbers, it could have been. Oh, they did, so this is a misprint in your book. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, usually the newer edition is more correct than the older edition. I guess they screwed that one up, huh? Okay. So, yeah, that's right. I don't have, I do have the new book, but I'm teaching from the old one because that's what most of the other students do. I haven't looked at it in the new book. Okay, so from the distance formula, PQ is 3 minus 
zero squared plus the square root of three minus zero squared plus the square root of two minus zero plus two minus zero squared. That would be square root of 13. Rs, square root of four minus one squared plus four minus two squared. And that also turns out square root of 13. Halfway there, just because they have the same magnitude doesn't make them equivalent. So what you also do is look at the slopes. The first one slope is 4 minus 2, which is 2 over 4 minus 1, 3, uh, 2 thirds. The second one is 2 minus 0 over 3 minus 0, also 2 thirds. So yes, if they have the same magnitudes and the same slopes, they are equivalent vectors. Okay? Because they have the same magnitude and the same direction, they are equivalent. All right. Now, that was example one, okay? Moving now to component form of a vector. Folks, this is the way to go. You can draw pictures of vectors. You can do calculations with vectors. But boy, if you put it in component form, you just about have the whole battle won, okay? And this is table, I mean, uh, yeah. All right. A couple of things. I ask everybody when they come in. Have you done the student course evaluation? No. Please do those. Please, everybody, do the student course evaluation. Number two, I have graded all your test ones and test twos. I've graded a few test threes, but I didn't get to finish those because. I was barraged by students yesterday afternoon with, uh, I only had two hours of office hours, and I had one guy in a calculus class that was in and my, out of my office at least three or four times needing tutoring help. And I just, it ate up my afternoon. I had another guy who was in and out of my office trying to make up quizzes and tests. And then I had somebody else, yeah, another guy uh, who was trying to make up a test. And they were just in and out all afternoon, and I couldn't get all the grades. And I took them home last night and got Ziltro graded last night because things came up at home that I couldn't control either. So, well, I had to go to the store with one thing. That, it, was, it was a mess. So I'll try to get those finished today if possible, definitely by Friday. So if you want to come by Birmingham campus, you can come by my office here before 3 o'clock or 3.15 and pick up your stuff, or you can come to Birmingham campus tomorrow anytime between 745 and 1145, but let me know if you're coming there so I can take your papers with me. Or you can pick them up anytime Monday. I uh, should have everything graded by Monday, uh, so pick them up Monday or Tuesday or whenever, and uh, I will be giving your last test, the Chapter 3 test, and the Comprehensive Finals at the end of the class today. That home. So if you want to know what you scored on the others while you're working on that, see me and I'll try to get them to you. So see me at the end of class to get test one and two. And a few of you can get test three. I got a couple graded, but that's all. All right, so let's look at component form of a vector, okay? A directed line, the directed line segment, whose initial point is the origin, as most often the most convenient reference of a vector like the one that had 0, 3, 2, you know, that one, um, is the most convenient representation of a set uh, of a set of equivalent directed line segments. Boy, it wasn't the same thing. That represents the vector V in standard position. If the initial point is the origin, then the vector is going uh, it's one way, okay, from the origin to one point, okay? A vector whose initial point is the origin, zero, zero, can be uniquely represented by the coordinates of the terminal point. Because if, if the origin is zero, zero, the terminal points basically give you the vector. And those are the, that's what called the component form of the vector. Now this book, I really like this notation. In the old days, they didn't always do this. This I really like. A point 
is put in parentheses. A point is a set of ordered pairs. B1, B2. Those are numbers. Okay? Now, if that point is the terminal point of a vector whose initial point is the origin, that same set of ordered pairs represents the component form of the vector. B1, B2. So how can you tell the difference between a point, parentheses, and a vector? The vector is in angle brackets. Now this is a fairly new notation. I've just seen it in the last, say, 10 or 15 years. Back when I was in college, I never remember seeing vectors represented with angle brackets. I really like that component point. But guess what? This very same author we use this calculus book now. I haven't started teaching from that because it's only Cal 1 has it now. I'm not teaching Cal 1 this term. But he, I've glanced at the book, he uses that for the Cal 1 test. It's the same author, right? Okay? Guess what? We use the same author for a linear algebra test. He uses this notation in that. He uses vectors with parentheses rather than angle brackets. And I don't know why. It's the same author, but he goes back to the parentheses. So you have to be careful. In this book, angle brackets means vector. Okay? And if that vector is in standard position, the point, the terminal point, and the vector will have this. The coordinates of the terminal point will be the same as the components of the vector, if it's in standard position, starting at 0, 0. The coordinates V1, V2 are called the... When the coordinates, when the vector has initial position at the origin, the coordinates V1, V2 are the components of V. If both the initial point and the terminal point lie at the origin, then you have the zero vector. Okay? I have a problem with the zero vector. You have to have it. Okay? I'm not saying you can't. But what's the problem with the zero vector? What has every vector got to have? Say again. What'd you say? A unit. A, 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 a unit. A unit. What do you mean by that? Okay. What was our definition of a vector? Had to have a magnitude and a direction. What's the magnitude of the zero vector? Zero. What kind of magnitude is that? And even worse, what direction is the unit? Is the unit going? It has no direction. It's not going from anywhere to anywhere. Okay. So therefore, I have some problems with the zero vector. It really doesn't have a magnitude, and it definitely has no direction. Okay. But you still have to have it. Okay. It's defined as the coordinates zero, zero. Okay. No magnitude, no direction. So the component form of a vector uh, with initial point P1, P2, notice this is not the origin now. Terminal point Q, Q1, Q2, here's how you give the component form of that vector, PQ. It's the first component, Q1 minus P1, so this is the initial, that's the final, always final minus initial, so uh, Q1 minus P1 comma Q2 minus P2. Put those in angle brackets. That gives you V1, V2, and that's the vector. Okay? So it doesn't have to be at standard position. If it is, you know what those are. But if it's not, the magnitude of that same vector would be the square root of this thing squared plus that thing squared. The components of the vector squared, which would be V1 squared. Now, here's where I mentioned before. If the magnitude of some vector v or any vector happens to be 1, we name that the unit vector. If its magnitude is 1, it's a unit vector. If the magnitude is 0, it's got to be the zero vector. Remember, the zero vector has no direction. It's the one and only vector that doesn't have a direction. It doesn't have a magnitude either. It's 0. Okay, so let's go back to two vectors. This time they're not 
at the origin there anywhere. U1, U2, V2, 1, V2. Guess what? Those are equal or equivalent if and only if U1 is identically the same as V1 and U2 is identically the same as V2. If their components are identical, they are equal. Okay? Now, that means the same sign, same magnitude, same everything. If the components are the same, the vectors are the same. For instance, in example one, where you have vector U going from its initial point 0, 0 to 3, 2, Q was 3, 2, then its representation U would be 3 minus 0, comma, 2 minus 0, comma, 3, 2. That would be its component. The vector V, on the other hand, was going from R, 1, 2, to S, 4, 4. Its components would be 4 minus 1, the initial first, uh, I mean, final minus initial of the first uh, component. 4 minus 1 was 3, 4 minus 2 was 2, 3, 2, same components, same vector. So those would be equivalent, or now they're saying equal vectors. Okay? So guess what? If you write it in component form, you don't have to calculate magnitude, you don't have to calculate direction. Write it in component form, if the components are the same, same vector. Much easier to deal with component form than having to do all those calculations. So here's example two. Find the component form and the magnitude of the vector v that has initial point 4, negative 7 and terminal point negative 1, 5. So what you want to do first, component form or magnitude? I don't care. Much. Component form. What would be the component form of that vector v? If it's a vector, I'm going to put an angle bracket there. What goes in first? Okay. Okay. Negative seven is the second uh, coordinate here. So usually we write the first coordinate first. So it would be negative 1 minus 4, comma, 5 minus negative 7. Okay? And what would that be? Do the math. Negative 5, comma, 12. That's the component form. Okay? Now, how do you get the magnitude? Square root of, so the magnitude of V will be the square root of what? Negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, okay, which is square root of, say again, 25 plus 144, which is what you say? 169, is that what you said? And what is square root of 169? 13 on the nose, okay? Most of the time, you're not going to get them to work out that nicely. It's going to be happy to do. Notice, even though you have a minus sign here for a component, when you square it, it goes positive. So your, your magnitudes would never be negative, ever. They're always going to be positive. That's why I sort of like it like this out of my closet. And you see, it's far easier to use to get the uh, magnitude from the component form than from your that form, then you'd have to do uh, minus 1, minus 4 squared plus 5 minus or minus 7 squared. You have to do all the hairy math. If you get the component form, everything is easy. Everything is easy. Okay? So let's clear that out of, oops, wrong key. Let's clear that out of the way. and see how they did it. So let P be negative four, uh, four negative seven, P1, P2. Boy, do they ever go around the ear to get to the nose or something, or 
okay? Q is negative 1, 5, P being the initial point, Q being the terminal point, Q1. Okay, so the component form, V of V1, V2, V1 would be terminal minus initial of 1, and V2 would be term, that would be minus 4, mi minus 1, minus a minus 4, no, I'm sorry, minus 1, minus a 4, which would be minus 5, and V1, V2 would be, where is it, 5 minus a minus 7, which would be 5 plus 7, which would be 12. So your components are negative 5, 12, that's your vector V in component form. The magnitude then would be the square root of the squares, sum of the squares of the components, negative 5 squared plus 12 squared, negative or a square root of 169, which happens to be exactly 13. Okay, that was example two. Let's move to vector operations. Two basic vector operations are scalar multiplication and vector addition. Most of the time we do vector addition and scalar operations, it doesn't really matter. The operations and operations of vectors Numbers are usually referred to as scalars, okay? So we don't say numbers anymore, we say scalars. So we have scalar multiplication, the sub number multiplied by vector. In this text, scalars are always real numbers. If you could have complex numbers, we're not. We're going to strictly have those as real numbers. Geometrically, the product of a A uh, vector V and a scalar K is a vector that is the magnitude of K, K times as long as V. If K was a small number, you've made V short. If K was a big number, you've just expanded K. That's why we call it a scalar. It scales up or scales down what the vector V was. The direction of V does not change unless the scalar is a negative. Since they're in the opposite direction. All right. When K is positive, KV is the same direction as V. When K is negative, KV is the direction opposite of that of V. But they're parallel, but in opposite directions. Now, don't do this yet. This figure is showing what this is describing here. If this is your vector V, then that would be one half of V. Or this would be one half of V. Or that would be one half of V. Same direction, but half the magnitude. 2V would be twice as long as the original V, wherever that would be. Negative V would be in the opposite direction of V. Same magnitude, opposite direction. And negative 3 halves V would be opposite direction, that's what the minus sign gives you, and 3 halves the magnitude, one and a half times. Okay, that scalar multiplication, okay? This verbiage does the direction. To add two vectors, U and V, geometrically, first position them without changing length or direction so that the initial point of the second vector, V, the second one, coincides with the terminal point of the first vector, U. In other words, tail to tip, or something like that, head to tail. That kind of a deal. So if this is your vector u, and there's your vector v, and you want to add those together, if it's u plus v, start with u, and then take v here and move it up. Don't change its magnitude, nor change its direction, but put the, uh, the tail of v on the tip of u, and keep the direction the same, and then the sum will be the resultant from the uh, tail of u to the tip of v. So that's what you get. This is v, the sum vector. It's also a vector. Adding two vectors, you get a vector. Okay? Now, interestingly enough, they've drawn the other two sides there you didn't use. That forms a parallelogram. And sometimes we call this a parallelogram method. And here's what comes out of that. What if you had started with V and put U tip to tail on V? 
its resulting vector would be exactly the same as this. So in other words, v plus v is the same as v plus v. So vector addition is commutative. Doesn't matter what order you do. Okay? But um, that's another ramification we don't have time to get to, but I just gave it to you. Okay. So there are the definitions of those, and unfortunately, we're out of time. So your test only goes through that. I wish we'd have had time to do properties. I wish we would have had time to do dot products. There was a lot where I wish we'd have had time. We just ran out of time. Sorry. So here first is your, uh, I'll give them both to you at once. Test, it says test three. This is really test four. I meant to check that on the sheet, but I forgot to. Uh, I had to scroll back and read one. Uh, oh, man. Number 10. We didn't get to. I thought we were going to get that far today. We did. So on test, it's really test four. It says test three. You only have to do one through nine. That's all I'm going to grade you on. But if you do 10 and get it right, then you get a bonus point. Okay? Now, your final exam. Number 10, we didn't get to do on this one. Actually, 9 or 10. I just glanced at this and misread it. This is actually from the previous test. <laughs> okay, but the previous is the same. So on your final exam, questions 9 and 10 are both wrong. Okay, uh, but you can do everything else in there. Okay, so here are Test four, even though it says test three, and the final. I don't think there's any graphics on either one of them, so I don't think you can read that book. To yourself, okay? Because you don't know who's turned in what. All right. Now, your research papers, of course, I can't return those to you because they periodic, periodically ask for samples to see the writing. And by the way, if you haven't turned in your research paper, you start losing points after today to get it into me today. Okay, Justin, here's your first. Mitchell, your first. Taylor, your first. Here. 
should not be recording all this, should I? Okay. Let me turn this off.